Hey guys, let's get back to talking about the concept of production and cost. So in the last few videos, we've looked at the relationship or we, I've introduced you to the relationship between inputs and outputs. So if you're running a business and we've talked about bakery, and I'm going to continue with that example, you have to buy some inputs, right? So you have to buy some raw materials, you have to buy coffee machine, you have to have an oven, you have to pay for electricity, and you have to hire some people. So, so far we only have one person, uh, but that might change as well as the business expands. So we've looked at the relationship between inputs and outputs very briefly. And then I've also introduced you to the concept of average product, total product, and marginal product. So in this video, we're going to continue in that line. So make sure if you're not clear, you go look at that video before we proceed with uh, today's video. So what we assumed in the previous video, and I'm going to continue with that is, when we talk about those three concepts, total product, average product, and marginal product, we keep every input fixed except one. And the one I've chosen to, to vary is labor. So as I hire, as the owner of the baker, as you hire more people, how much more output can you produce given these fixed inputs? All right, so make sure you remember that throughout this uh, video and, and the next video as well. So keeping all of those vid uh, uh, concepts uh, in mind, let me just briefly remind you. So total product is the relationship between total output that a business produces, and it's going to be a function of inputs. So what we've assumed, given that there are only two inputs, we have more than two inputs, we're going to keep one input fixed and just look at the relationship between one of those inputs, which we let vary, which is x1, and the output they produce. So total product just tells us how much total output can be produced given those inputs. Average product just tells you what is the average. On average, this is the average product. On average, how much output do your inputs produce? So total quantity or total product divided by the labor you hire. And then marginal product, which is perhaps the trickiest of them, which we're going to talk about a lot more today, is a change in output divided by the change in labor. So the difference between these two is that here we say, if I hire one more person, how much more output can they produce? So if, my, if the baker hires one more person, how many more cakes can they produce? And average product just tells you, on average, if you have 10 people working for you, how much do they produce on average? It doesn't differentiate between how productive your first worker or how productive your last worker is, uh, you know, is going to be. So make sure you're clear on each of these concepts before we proceed with this video. So in today's video, we're going to concentrate a lot more on marginal product of labor because it is very important as we move forward as well. So make sure you're, you pay a little extra attention today. So we assume people are rational. Consumers are rational and producers are rational. We all act in our own self-interest and we try to maximize uh, whatever our goal is to make us happy. So we're going to assume that here as well. Now, when our baker hires an extra worker, they have to pay them salary, right? So the cost of them hiring a worker is what they pay them in wages. And the benefit they get is how much output they produce, which is given by MPL. So that's why it's very important because it tells the baker how much more output is my last input giving me. So we are going to look at these and compare and see whether they should hire them or not. So MPL is very important. So we're going to look at, does MPL, MPL remain constant? Does it go up? Does it, decre does it decrease? And we'll see there are three cases, uh, and we're going to talk about each of those. So first one is increasing marginal product of labor. So what this means is as I increase uh, hiring an extra person, the amount of output they produce increases. Right? So each worker is being more and more productive. So as you hire more workers, MPL goes up. Obviously, output goes up as well. All right? So think about why that might be the case and pause the video and think about that and come back. One explanation why you might have increasing marginal product is that you can specialize. So if our baker, going back to our example, is running the whole show there, he has to prepare all these to first, he has to buy the raw materials, he has to make the, bake the cakes, he has to clean the store, he has to serve the customers and work at the, you know, as the cashier. So he's doing everything by himself. Now if he hires another person, they can specialize. One person can take care of the baking, the other person can take care of the customers. So each of them will be more productive. That's how you have increasing marginal product of labor. All right? You're able to run the whole assembly line more efficiently if you're specializing in a specific task. All right? So that's what that is referring to. All right, The other one is diminishing marginal product of labor, or you can also call it decreasing marginal product of labor. And what that says is, if you hire more people, they will produce more, but the additional amount they produce goes down. So this, this stuff is a little tricky and not the most interesting, but it's very important, so make sure you pay extra attention. So difference between diminishing marginal product and increasing marginal product is if you hire more people, they will produce more. The question is, do they produce, how much extra do they produce relative to the previous worker? If they're being more productive, that's called increasing marginal product of labor. If they're being less productive, 
that is called diminishing or decreasing marginal product of labor. Again, you know, keep in mind all other inputs are kept fixed. And the reason we have diminishing marginal product of labor is because given the fact that other inputs are kept fixed, we only have one oven, we only have two coffee machines, we only have X amount of ingredients, they can only be so much productive, right? So they can only make use of specialization up to a certain degree, right? Because inputs, other inputs are kept fixed. Now, if we let other inputs vary as well, that will change as well. Right? So the reason we have diminishing marginal product of labor is because certain inputs, especially in the short run, are kept fixed. And the last one, which is the least common in, in, in when you look at the real world, is negative marginal product, where now if you hire an extra person, they produce less than what the previous people were producing. So if you hire five people, they produce, let's say, 100 cakes. If you hire the sixth person, they'll produce 90 cakes. So productivity is going down when you hire an extra person. So obviously you do not want to hire the sixth person in this example because you can make more cakes uh, with just five people. So here marginal product is actually negative. So this is the least likely scenario, hopefully if you're running a business, you don't want to be operating here. Uh, and you know the reason for this is that you have too many workers and not enough of other inputs. So when you go to a store and you realize that you know, there aren't too many customers but they're taking too much time, uh, that's pro that might be because they have too many people working behind the counters and they're just getting into each other's way. So that's why we have negative marginal product. So a couple of concepts in relation to you know, all three of these increasing, decreasing, and negative marginal product is the law of variable proportions and the law of diminishing returns, which we'll talk about in the next slide. So law of variable proportion says that for initially, when a business is starting out and they're hiring inputs or labor, they will experience increasing marginal product of labor because of specialization, because marginal product is increasing. And then eventually, they will run into the problem of the fact that in the short run, inputs are fixed, certain inputs are fixed. Again, if you're not comfort comfortable with the short run, long run scenario, go look at the previous video, uh, the link for which my, should have popped up on your top right of the screen. Uh, but if you understand that, eventually, given certain inputs are fixed, you will run into the problem of diminishing marginal product. And that concept is going to, uh, is what the law of diminishing returns says, which, and they both are very closely correlated. The law of diminishing returns and the previous concept are very closely related. Law of diminishing returns says eventually, in the short run, every business is going to be subject to diminishing marginal product of labor. You might get, you know, you might be able to make use of specialization up to a certain point, but eventually, every business is going to run into the problem where you don't have enough of other inputs to keep hiring more people and being more and more productive. So these two are very important concepts. Uh, and another reason why you might have uh, diminishing returns is if the business expands too much, it's very hard to coordinate uh, you know, across the management process. So when you look at multinationals, sometimes they run into that problem as well. Make sure you are very comfortable with, so in the previous video, you've learned average total marginal product. So that's hopefully you're good with that. Now you need to know why marginal product changes. Why does marginal product go up? Why does it go down? And what does it mean? So in the next video, we're going to graph all of this. So if you're not comfortable with this material, it's going to be impossible for you to understand what I'm going to be doing next.